Hello and welcome to our service on Sunday the 28th of June. Today is the last service that Malcolm Pyatt, our placement student, is with us. Um, and it's a real shame that we've not been able to sort of give him a proper goodbye um, in church, maybe with cake and some fizz. But I'm hoping that we might be able to do something like that for him a little later this year and invite him back so that we can properly say thank you to Malcolm for the time he spent with us. But that means that instead of having a sermon this week, um, I've managed to get myself off the hook for a sermon this week. Um, um, and I've interviewed Malcolm about his time with us and I hope you enjoy uh, what he has to share with us um, in the service today. So as usual, please do join in with the words in yellow as we work our way through the service. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we take a moment to consider how we have been this week with other people and how we have been with God. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please repeat after me. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. To God be glory forever, to God be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. To God be glory forever, to God be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. To God be glory forever, to God be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Let us pray. God our Saviour, look on this wounded world in pity and in power. Hold us fast to your promises of peace one for us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jeremiah, chapter 28, verses 5 to 9. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. 
And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all people. The prophets who precede you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 6, verses 12 to 23. Therefore, do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you now are ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So Malcolm, you've been on placement with us since um, since Advent 2019, which feels like an absolute age ago when we think about all the different things that have happened. And you've probably had the most unusual placement that you could possibly have had in a church uh, while trained to be a vicar. So, um, But what we'd like to use this time to do, Malcolm, is just find out a bit more of your story and, and how it's been for you uh, spending time with us in Bulbara and Clowns. So my first question to you, Malcolm, is can you tell us a little bit about how you've ended up where you are today? So how, how you felt God's call on your life and how you ended up training to be a priest in the Church of England? It all started back in about 2003 when I went on a uh, holiday to Hyona with the church. Uh, and in that week, um, I had thoughts of being called by God to priesthood. 
Iona is a magical place. It's so peaceful. But when I got back home, I put all those thoughts out my head. But I must admit that over time, then thoughts kept coming back. Mm -hmm. And they came back stronger each time. But I just kept pushing it back, pushing it back. And then it was in um, 2012 when I decided to go on the journey in faith course to uh, learn more about my faith. I followed the year through. Uh, and at the end of it, we was asked if we thought about doing anything. Well, I had thought about being a priest, but I just thought I was totally off the academic scale. <laughs> so I put in to be a, a reader. I went on, I was accepted for the reader's course. Um, and dare I say that I thought I'd be turned down. So we booked two weeks in Lanzarote. <laughs> we missed the first two weeks. We were on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, I was licensed and I was at, I went to Brimington, my own parish church, St. Michael's and All Angels, in 2015, and then I've served as a reader. Mm -hmm. But then the thought started coming back. And I went to a vocations day at Wingerworth, and uh, I caused problems because they wanted to know what a newly licensed reader want, was wanting to be a priest for. I went to see a lady at Derby, and then I, I had a placement with a DDO, and then um, then I was accepted. How, how did it feel when you were accepted? It, it, it's just it was just un unbelievable, really. But um, yeah, I did worry about the academic side, um, but. Um, I started my training with All Saints and Derby Diocese and uh, step by step we're getting through the assignments but then last year through some serious uh, family bereavements my training was altered mm. um, and then I picked it back up. You came to us, didn't you? Because I, I think we first met actually because you came to my induction. And yeah, you were yeah. representing the readers at my induction, which was lovely. And then we got to know each other a little bit because I, I helped doing some of the teaching on the All Saints course. That's right. So we met there, and uh, and um, I was kind of quite keen that we had a, a placement student, and you you were quite keen as well to come to us. So it's been been really good. So speaking of the placement, I mean, you've been here in two churches, so St. James in Balborough and St. John the Baptist in Clown. Uh, do you want to share just a little bit of some of the highlights of your time with us? Um, in Balborough, I thought the music was amazing, especially Christmas Mass. Mm. Absolutely amazing music. But probably one of the highlights was doing the um, for a single service together. <laughs> and when I was first told about it, in all honesty, I didn't think it would work. <laughs> Neither did my husband. <laughs> but it, it went really well. Yeah. So, uh, and there was fun side to it and a serious message as well. Mm, so that was for those people that didn't see that. Um, for our Chris Dingle service, we did it at Epiphany in Balbra, and I dressed up as a, a Chris Dingle in a big... Um, inflatable orange suit <laughs> and Malcolm did the sermon but we managed to make it work didn't we we had a lot of fun uh, but we also well. managed to to make it quite prayerful at the same time so so yeah <laughs> that was great fun it'd be a highlight for me as well that that uh, good nice memory of our time together it's, it's just a shame that uh, it didn't carry on at Balborough through Covid Mm. Uh, because I was beginning to get to know more people there. Clown, I found it very welcoming, very warm church, the community. And there was various things what we did there, um, like Save Space, mm. how valuable that was uh, to people coming from out of the community who didn't normally go to church. Um and obviously some of them had seen it for, on the social media sites, hadn't they? Mm. 
Mm. So, but I think it was really valuable uh, for people to be able to come and to talk with others who um, were suffering in the same ways. Mm. And I'm sure that some people went out of church them days we we held it, feeling better in themselves, which was a great result. And then we did the course at night, didn't we? Yes, the Finding Faith course. Finding, yeah, that that was good because we had a good selection of people who didn't normally go to church, not regular anyway. Yes, so it was it was rather abruptly stopped because of yes. uh, COVID, but hoping possibly to try and start up the Finding Faith course again, maybe using Zoom, um, yeah. and we can chat online um, and keep the course going. And I think quite a few people during the lockdown have expressed an interest in faith and have kind of explored a little bit more. And I think one of the good things about some of the online services is that people have been able to just dip their toes in to church Uh, from their own home from the safety of their own home you know without any fear of embarrassment or not being sure whether what to do or when to stand up and sit down and I think that's been one of the positive things Um, so I'm hoping that maybe some people that that might have had their interest peaked through the online stuff um, may like to come to a service face to face when we're meeting again so speaking of lockdown something that I'm trying to do is just spend a bit of time reflecting really on on some of the positive habits that I've managed to develop during this lockdown time and and some of the good things that have happened. And I just wondered if you had a feeling of, is there anything particular that you've kind of learnt during the lockdown period that you'd like to sort of take with you as we slowly emerge from lockdown into sort of a new way of being? We can't take life for granted. Mm. I think it's uh, certainly made me think, well, last year made me think, but certainly this year as well everything's going seemingly all right and everything's stopped in its tracks. I mean, on a negative side, we're seeing the worst in people stripping supermarket shelves and others possibly going without. Mm. But on a positive side, we're seeing people coming together, more compassion, perhaps showing more love. <clears throat> There's some real positive things came out, could come out of it. Yeah, and I think the, the the key thing's going to be how do we keep that going, really, and not revert to old habits, but try and um, – we've seen the best of people and the worst of people, as you say, um, but it's how we how we retain those those good things and, 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 as you say, not take life for granted and appreciate the small things. I've, I've noticed that it's the little things that I'm missing. Yeah. Um, it's never the big things, is it? It's the small I've things. Almost, I've always said for years it's just – it's the simple things in life what are most important. Yeah, we've we've really learned that's true, haven't we? Yeah. That's a perfect place to end, end our little chat. But um, I just wanted to publicly thank you, Malcolm, for your time with us, for everything you've given to us. It's been a great pleasure having you with us and we're going to miss you, but we hope that this isn't the end um, and hopefully you'll be able to, to come back and uh, and come and see us in the future so you're going to be licensed hopefully fairly shortly to the parish as a sort of lay worker until you're then ordained as a deacon probably at Michaelmas I think possibly Possibly. which is the end of September obviously everything's a little bit up in the air but do keep Malcolm in your prayers everybody um and um I'll keep you posted as to how he's doing um and hopefully we might be able to support him at his ordination service in September So thank you very much, Malcolm, and we wish you every blessing for your future ministry. I I just want to say thank you to everyone at Barbara and Clown for making me welcome and putting up with my longer sermons. (laughs) It's been great. And special thanks to Reverend Brian for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. We We believe in one God, the the Father, the the Almighty, Maker of of heaven and and earth. Of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, 
he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and give us those things for which, for our unworthiness we dare not, and for our blindness we cannot ask. And so we do ask that your love and goodness be in the hearts of all those who carry the responsibility for governing our church. We pray for those whose faith has been challenged by the lack of physical contact in our church buildings. We give thanks for those whose faith has been strengthened and rekindled by online and telephone church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who govern our country that they may be wise in the easing of restrictions and that the people may be responsible in their implementation of that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are less fortunate, those who get less because the more fortunate get more. We pray for justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as Black Lives Matter is so high in public consciousness, we pray for those who suffer prejudice because they're different for whatever reason, colour, disability, culture, ethnicity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, we pray for all whom we know and love and cherish, that their lives may be enriched as they enrich ours. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So let us gather all our prayers together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so now we come to our act of spiritual communion. You may wish to change your posture. You may wish to kneel as if you're kneeling at the altar rail. You may wish to hold your hands out with your palms facing upwards to receive the Holy Spirit. In union, dear Father, with Christian people throughout the world and across the centuries gathered to make Eucharist, hearing your holy word, and receiving the precious body and blood. 
I offer you praise and thanksgiving. Even though I am exiled from tasting the bread of heaven and drinking the cup of life, I pray that you will unite me with all the baptized and with your Son who gave his life for us. Come, Lord Jesus, dwell in me and send your Holy Spirit that I may be filled with your presence. I will leave a time of silence for you to pray this prayer yourself. Let us pray. Lord, in these days of mercy, make us quiet and prayerful. In these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of emptiness, take possession of us. In these days of waiting, open our hearts to the mystery of your cross. Amen.
let us bow our heads to receive God's blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship this week. Um, Do keep an eye out for announcements about our return to worshipping in person in church. Um, We won't be opening up until we're ready to do so, um, but we will also respond to need in the community. So do let me know um, if you have um, any views on on reopening. Um, But what we will try and do is make sure that once we are back in church for physical services, that we will be continuing with some of our online worship as well and also our worship over the phone every Thursday. So there will always be something for people who don't feel comfortable quite yet coming back into our buildings. So thank you for coming this week and we'll see you very soon. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. During this difficult time when our church buildings are closed, we're still a church, meeting virtually for prayer services and fellowship, loving our neighbours by offering practical support to the vulnerable and caring for our communities. The work of our church is reliant on people's generosity, generosity that is a hallmark of a lived out faith and a testament to it. We give to our church in a variety of ways, but with the closure of all our buildings, we cannot receive all the gifts that we usually would. So we really need your help now. If you're able to give more at this time, here's how you can help.